Central Greece for warns bloggers they are not above libel laws. She said this in today's Senate Public Information Committee's inquiry on the proliferation of fake news. Other centrists slammed officials of the Presidential Communications Office for their personal posts, which they say spread misinformation online. Our senior correspondent Cecil Ardizabal has more. Communications Assistant Secretary Moka Uson was not present at the second hearing on alleged proliferation of fake news but she still grabbed a big part of the discussions. Senator Bamakino cites a past experience where Uson shared misinformation. We filed the Zero Food Waste Act. Maganda po yung batas. Um, sinisikap po niya na yung pagkain po sa ating bansa ay hindi po masayang. Tinawag po yung pagpagbil. Natroll po ako, natroll po yung batas. And right now, it's in limbo. Until now, I think si Asik Moka still refers to the bill as the pagpag bill or me as boy pagpag. That's misinformation. PCOO Secretary Martin Andanar defends Uson. Ang sabi ko sa kanya na as far as your blog is concerned, ay hindi po yan refleksyon ng PCOO. So we are not, uh, no, we are not whatever you say there, hindi po PCOO yan. If you talk about accountability, kung accountability po yung pinag-uusapan natin, hindi naman po nawawala yung pagiging assistant secretary niya kapag nagsusulat siya ng blog. Committee Chairperson Senator Grace Poe asked PCOO if the office did not consider shutting down Uson's blog. Her own private blog is also a way of expressing and communicating that it is indeed overlapping with her official function, perhaps even using government time to be able to um, impart, uh, to be able to fulfill her work in her blog. Have you ever considered uh, perhaps that this is a co conflict of interest and it should be shut down. Andanar says he will reach out to Uson. Meanwhile, Senator Manny Pacquiao also called out Presidential Communications Operations Office Under Secretary Lorraine Badoy for what he calls a malicious post by Badoy during the 2016 elections. Badoy, in her defense, said the post was just in reaction to the senator's remarks in the past about homosexuals. Badoy apologized to Pacquiao and said she will take down the post. Gusto ko lang basahin yung sinabi mo. Guess what I saw when I went on uh, on a run this morning in my village, Manny Pacquiao's campaign car in front of his mistress' house. Your Honor, may I please explain myself before I give you an apology? Go, go ahead, go ahead. Before I give you my go ahead, go ahead, proper go ahead. apology, Your Honor, um, what you said about the LGBT community was very hurting to me. Uh, it really, really hurts me because a lot of people who are very close to my heart belong to that community and when you call them masahol pa sa hayop. Prior to all these, Andanar apologized for past mistakes his office has done. We have made mistakes in the past. We have been held accountable for them. But these were honest mistakes with no intention to malign anybody and with no malicious intent. Committee Chairperson Grace Poe warns bloggers they are not above libel laws. You cannot just attack a person without basis and then hide behind the skirt of free expression. Meanwhile, Rappler CEO Maria Ressa discussed the algorithm on social media that they have found out. That fake news is a global phenomenon and that fake news started proliferating in the country in July 2016 after the campaign for president of then Mayor Rodrigo Duterte. What you're seeing in our country is something that's similar in other countries around the world. A campaign machinery becomes weaponized. And the irony, of course, is that it didn't become weaponized until after President Duterte won. That happened in July of 2016. Rappler has been under attack by the Duterte administration. The committee will subpoena representatives from Facebook, Google, Globe, Smart, and the Department of Information and Communications Technology in the next hearing. The committee is carefully trying to look into regulating social media and looking at media literacy as a long-term solution on both the parts of the government and on the part of the media organization. Uh, Senator Grace Poe also said that they're looking at putting parameters on all platforms of mass media so that they will not be abused and used for propaganda while enjoying freedom of speech and expression. After a verbal tussle with Senator Dick Gordon, former Customs Chief Nicanor Faildon finds himself in the Pasay City Jail, but the now Civil Defense Deputy Administrator asks the Supreme Court to order his immediate release. Our CNR Gangel tells us more. 
Wearing a shirt with the words truth is justice, former customs chief Nicanor Faildon smiled at bystanders as he casually walked into the Pasay City Jail to be detained. On the orders of Senator Richard Gordon, Faildon was transferred to the Pasay City Jail from his detention facility at the Senate. The order came barely a day after Gordon had a heated exchange with Faildon during the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing on the 6.4 billion Shabu shipment that entered the country. You took an oath. You had a uniform. You turn your back against your own government. And I attended against... this hearing, sir, because I am now a government employer, not because I expect that you will lead this committee to find out the truth. You have so far from getting that, Your Honor. Feldon was detained at the Senate since September last year after he was cited for contempt by the Senate for refusing to testify at the Shabu shipment hearing. Sharing a cramp cell with other inmates at the city jail, Feldon's lawyer, Jose Dino, says he couldn't be happier with his transfer. Dino adds, Faeldon will not request for special treatment even if he has a heart ailment. Dito po, he is with his own kind, may makakasalamuha siya, at uh, we expect that he will be uh, uh, very happy here, very contented, mapa-aircon man, mapapapag, mapasahig, mapamalamig, mapamainit, marino po si Captain Faeldon, tatanggapin niya. After the booking procedure, jail personnel thoroughly searched Faildon's belongings for possible contraband items. Bureau of Jail Management and Penology spokesperson Saver Solda says the former customs chief will have to follow jail rules, from visiting hours to participation in educational activities. Uh, we wanted na i-assure yung uh, safety niya sa loob ng facility, but at the same time, humihingi kami ng kooperasyon na sumunod palagi sa mga rules and regulations ng facility. Dino hopes Faeldon doesn't have to stay in jail for long. He filed an urgent motion asking the Supreme Court to grant Faeldon's appeal to be released from detention. He argues Gordon's, quote, public display of bullying, pomposity, and abuse of power, unquote, by threatening to transfer Faeldon to the Pasay City Jail are enough grounds to grant him freedom. Siguro in the next couple of days, mahaba na yung one week, we are expecting very, very, very good news. Of course, uh, giveaway na yon. We, we expect that he would be uh, set free, but uh, every lawyer is hopeful. In the meantime, Dino says Faeldon will continue to work as deputy administrator of the Office of Civil Defense within his cell and bonding with other inmates. CNN Philippines also sat down with Senator Richard Gordon, who is leading the investigation into the multi-million peso drug shipment and corruption in the Customs Bureau. Gordon says the decision to move Faeldon to the Pasay City Jail came after they clashed head-on in yesterday's hearing. Well, it's continuous arrogance, it's continuous intransigence, defying the Senate and saying he's not going to go because uh, all the senators, uh, most of us are not uh, fair. Uh, he's not going to find the truth there. I mean, he's the one who defines the truth in this case. He forgets that he's under investigation. Mm -hmm. And when he's under investigation on a serious matter, because he was totally negligent. Can you imagine that this guy sat on a case, the biggest drug smuggling case in the country, in customs? And what did he do? He sat on it for two months until I made the expose. And thanks to media also who gave me the tip, we immediately investigated the moment we heard it. Uh, it the, the incident occurred in May. We investigated in July. And, uh, you know, uh, the investigation was very fruitful. Faldon's lawyer says Gordon's performance at the hearing was a clear case of persecution. Speaking to CNN Philippines, Jose Adino also reacts to Gordon's statement, saying Faldon sat on the biggest drug shipment case during his stint as customs commissioner. The Chinese embassy in the Philippines itself commended Captain Faldon and his uh, former team at the Bureau of Customs for a job well done, specifically for leading the team in seizing the biggest drug haul seizure in Philippine history, the 6.4 billion pesos shabu haul. They did that in four hours or less. Regarding Faldon's stay at the jail or the Pasay City Jail, Dino says the former Marine will follow policies or rules and regulations. President Rodrigo Duterte visits Marawi City today. There he leads the distribution of certificates of acceptance and occupancy of transitory sh uh, shelter units by Task Force Bangon Marawi. Let's speak to our senior correspondent Ina Andalong. She's on the phone from Marawi. Ina, how many temporary shelters are we talking about? The uh, 250 more temporary housing units were turned 
over to Maranaos who lost their homes in the five-month siege here in Marawi City. President Duterte led the distribution of certificates of acceptance and occupancy at the site in Barangay Sagonsongan, which is one of the five temporary housing sites for displaced people. It's been three months since Marawi was liberated from terrorists and Malacanang says 20% of the targeted 6,400 temporary housing units have already uh, have already been built. Presidential spokesman Harry Roque says at the rate of construction, they expect all the needed temporary housing units built one year after the city's liberation, which is in October. Now, apart from the housing units, Marawi Mayor Madul Usman Gandamra also received 13 million pesos in behalf of the local government. Water filtration systems and books were also given to the Maranao people. In his speech, President Duterte promised there will be more funds available for Marawi's rehabilitation. But he did have a plea to the people, don't let terrorism in again, otherwise it will just destroy all these ongoing efforts. Here's the President in his own words. It is not the correct way to obey Islam. You do not kill and destroy for no reason at all. Kaya wag nating papasukin, I beg of you not to allow them to enter because it will just cause massive destruction and the loss of lives, including the innocent one who are really the helpless in case of war. The President Pia was in a hurry earlier, saying he had to get on the chopper and fly out because of bad weather. But prior the turnover ceremonies here, he also led the groundbreaking of a new military camp in Barangay Kapantaran and also inspected Bahay Pag-asa Community, another site for more temporary housing units. Malacanang is challenging Senator Sonny Trillanes to go ahead and file an impeachment case against the president if the center wishes to. Presidential spokesman Harry Roque was responding to the center who said the palace's suspension of overall deputy ombudsman Arthur Garandang is an impeachable offense. Trillanes noted the president has no jurisdiction over deputy ombudsman and that the Supreme Court has resolved this issue. Karandang was suspended for unauthorized disclosure of bank accounts supposedly belonging to President Duterte and his family. Go ahead, file the impeachment, do it as soon as possible, and we will see you in the House. We will implement the order. If he wants to go to court, because I understand he's saying it's unconstitutional, let him, but we will not go to court, because our reading is the office of the president has the power to discipline him. In an interview with CNN Philippines, attorney Manny Luna, who filed the complaint against Garandang, says the deputy ombudsman's action was a threat to democracy. He asked the Supreme Court should revisit its ruling in 2014 that the president has no jurisdiction over a deputy ombudsman. We already expected that the office of the ombudsman, particularly Ombudsman Morales, to be, uh, well, will not take action over this and would never sanction her own subordinate concerning the unauthorized disclosure. Well, that's generally correct. However, we are actually challenging the Supreme Court to revisit the ruling in Emilio Gonzalez III versus Office of the President. Because from my point of view, there was uh, something uh, egregious, egregious or uh, wrong with the decision. In fact, the, the voting was very slim. It was 8-7. This has to be clarified by the Supreme Court. And because of the change in membership of the highest court, we believe that, that we have a fighting chance.